Hey guys, Anthony here for Rev3 Games. We are at the Hawken Preview event at E3. I've got Jason Hughes with me, who is the producer of the game. That's a pleasure. Tell us a little bit about Hawken. We've seen this trailer. We've seen some some video of it so far. We know it's we know it's Mex. We know it's Battle. Mex Battle. Those are all good keywords, yeah. I'd say. Cool. We are a Mech first-person shooter. Um, the big date for us is 12, 12, 12 of this year. It's okay. when our open beta is. We are free to play, and like, the excitement and what everyone, like, the response to this game is tremendous and really humbling for all of us. So we're really excited to get a chance to for people to try yeah. it out. So I mean, I've seen a couple of these videos, and I got really stoked based on just kind of the aesthetic and the look of the whole thing. I finally got a chance to sit down and play it here at the preview event, and I was really amazed. So okay, good. Uh, tell me a little bit about the mode that I was playing tonight. Which mode were you playing so tonight? So there was... Uh, we have there was, three available. Okay. We, have, uh, we have deathmatch, we have team deathmatch, and then we also have a siege mode. I think I might have been playing siege mode. Okay. Yeah. So siege mode, I had a base. I had to bring energy to the base. That there would was, be siege mode. That was siege mode. Great. That'd be siege mode. Cool. So yeah, so what I was seeing is... I'm on a team, I have a base, I bring energy to the base that charges up a battleship which attacks the other team. That is correct. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome is good, awesome is good. Um, actually, that's that's a mode that we're, that we're pretty proud of, uh, and it's very unique to Hawken. So there's a lot of different elements that we have uh, that are great um, in different other kinds of game modes. Mm -hmm. We kind of put it all together into, yeah. into one. So there is, there's the resource gathering aspect. You go out and you have to collect energy, bring it back to your base so that you can, uh, so your base can stock up and get enough energy to, to launch that battleship. It flies over the map, starts, uh, starts doing damage to the opponent's yeah. base. And at the same time, then it turns into almost like a king of the hill kind of capture point situation where there's a giant anti-aircraft gun in the middle of, uh, you know, in the middle of the map. Yeah. And uh, your team has to, has to hold it to protect the battleship. It was very fast paced. Objectives were constantly changing. It was definitely keeping us on our toes. Uh, there were a few different robot classes and loadouts available. Right. Uh, my favorite. I, I finally settled on a uh, on a medium uh, demo. Okay, sure. Which I thought was really cool. Tell me uh, about the kind of cl robot classes that are going to come with the game and weapons that are going to sure. come with the game, and then how much you guys are adding later and how monetization comes into play. Sure. So. What you saw were some of the presets that we that we created for E3. You know, we wanted people to be able to just jump in uh, and start playing right away. We have some very clear descriptions in there to try to, yeah. you know, like, oh, sniper. Oh, I know what that role is. I, yeah. I, I, I can play that way. So when it comes to, we have six that are available. We have uh, three of the light class, three of the medium class. And when people finally get a hands-on customization, um, it's not just about like creating a sniper. Like it, it really is a, a personalized experience on on what you want your mech to be. So the parts are going to be interchangeable. You can swap out okay. the legs. You can swap out the torso, the head, and and other parts. You can customize the paint job. Uh, we also have a very detailed talent uh, sort of skill tree where as you go, as you progress, you unlock additional points that you can place into different categories uh, to potentially even unlock a special ability. Uh, there's offense, defense, uh, and then also movement that helps with your agility. Okay. So we have a wide range of ways that people can play. You can have, you can have a light mech. You can have two of them. They look exactly the same. You have the same weapons equipped, yet they will play in two completely different ways. Let's talk about how, uh, let's talk about how, do you guys have a, a sort of monetization plan for adding those extra weapons or parts or things like that? So that's actually something that we're still, uh, that we're still playing with and attempting to balance. So we don't have any solid monetization plans, not because it's necessarily any kind of a secret, but when you're talking about normal progression, you're talking about bringing monetization mm -hmm. in there, there's a very fine balance that you have to that you have to hit. Yeah. Uh, you want people on. You you want everyone to be happy playing the game. So that's something that we're still uh, that we're still fiddling with and tweaking. Okay. And let's talk about the aesthetic because this game has a very very unique look. When I'm trying to explain it to people, I'm always like, well, it's like you're in a giant robot in Kowloon City, in the future, kind of Blade Runnery. There's film grain. What were you guys going for with the look here? Well, it's very not too distant future. Okay. Uh, that's really the the key for us. Uh, and I think the visual aesthetic, that's something that's very unique to the game. I think that's what catches players' attention like right away. It's yeah. what gets them interested, which is which is a huge positive. I think the gameplay is going to keep them playing, but that that unique li look certainly helps. So Blade uh, that, Runner was a heavy influence. Yeah, it was. And you look at Ghost in the Shell. Uh, yeah, that's another definitely. influence where it feels. It feels like a world that the lights will go on and off. Yeah, because robots draw a lot of power. 
They drove a lot of power up there. Someone <laughs> must have powered up another few minutes. Yeah. But uh, some of the mechs yeah. look like they've been pieced together basically from spare parts. Yeah, I was kind of amazed. You Usually when you see these futuristic things, and even, you know, you usually see people going towards that clean, idealistic future. And even when you see people going towards a dirty future, that's hard to get right. But I feel like you guys really oh, kind of nailed that with the look. Um, that city that we've seen in the trailer and, and tonight, uh, is that the only map that's going to be available? Or how many different environments are we going to see? We have a wide range. We actually have three that are playable here at E3. Uh, there's one that... Um, We've shown, I think we've shown three in the gameplay trailers that, that okay. we put out. There's the one that has the teal look to it, which yes. was part of uh, our, 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 first, uh, our first trailer, which is, which is very strong, that very instantly puts out what the, what the, what the game really is. Uh, we also have one that's, uh, that looks like it's in the desert. We have, that, uh, we have that here. And then we have another map, which is it's a smaller map. Uh, we, we've nicknamed it Alleys for now okay. uh, because there are a lot of different alleys that, that you travel through to get to larger rooms. So basically we have other maps in development. So every single map still has the same theme. It still has that same motif of, of that overdeveloped, the, that blocky structure that is so prevalent in, in, in the map that, uh, that you played. Um, but there's so many other things that we can do for with it. We have maps that are uh, that are very vertical. We have maps that are more horizontal. We have ones with multiple tiers. We have different environments. We have you know different degrees of visibility. Different like there's a lot that we can do with the game, and we are we have we have a lot of great ideas that I can't wait for people to actually see. Uh, we just have to get it. We just have to get it right and polished and out there for uh, for us to all be proud of. Awesome. Well, Jason, I cannot wait to see what you guys have in the works, Hawking. 12, 12, 12. We'll have more information as they get closer to launch. And of course, we're at E3 all week, so be sure you subscribe so you don't miss any news from the event.